Hello everyone, here's Briefly Everything, and today we'll travel from 2300 BCE all the way to 2000. Although I want to start a little bit earlier actually, 2334 BCE. Now so far our planet has seen the rise of a number of civilizations, but now we're about to get our first empire in history. The Akkadians were the second civilization in Mesopotamia after the Sumerians. With the Sumerians in the south and themselves in the north, the Akkadians, led by Sargon of Akkad, or you could just call him Sargon the Great actually as well. He went down south with his army and they won 34 battles conquering most of the Sumerian cities. As you can see Sargon, the very great man, was greatly successful and is today revered as a semi-sacred figure in history. Thanks to the victories, Sargon and his fellow Akkadians were able to unite Mesopotamia under history's first empire, the Akkadian Empire. The definition of which essentially just refers to different cultures and languages united under one ruler. Then later on we got Naram Sin, who was Sargon's grandson, and he expanded the empire even further by taking control of the area all the way from the Mediterranean to the Persian Gulf. The Akkadians were very good at creating empires, but unfortunately they were not so successful at running them. So as this guy Naram Sin eventually did die, the Akkadian empire would also collapse shortly after, surviving for about 180 years. The Akkadians were defeated by the Gutians who sacked their capital city, Akkad, burning it all the way to the ground. In fact, the Gutians did such a thorough job at destroying this city that it's actually never been found. A bit harsh you might think, but yes, so were the times. Then the Gutians established a dynasty of their own for a little little while, which will only be relevant until this following sentence. Because now, the first civilization in history, Sumer, is back for more. They conquer the Gutians and resume control of the area, establishing the Neo-Sumerian Empire. A lot of empiring in this one. I guess once someone has built up their entire empire, it's easier for the next guy to just come on in and defeat you and resume control, thus creating a new empire quite easily. I guess that's easier said than done though. The Sumerians and the Neo Empire lived on and they were still not done making history. If you recall, they've already invented written language, mathematics, and now they're at it again. One of the first notions of a civilization was constituting laws, and the Sumerian king Urnamu composed the first collection of laws in the Code of Urnamu. His laws went something like this. Law 1. If a man commits a murder, this man must be killed. Then he got pretty specific. Law 9. If a man divorces his first wife, he shall then pay her one mina of silver. Then following up on that law in Law 10, if it's a former widow whom he divorces, he shall pay her half a mina of silver. He even told you in Law 19, if a man cuts off another man's foot, he is to pay 10 shekels. Those were just a few examples of his laws, but you can definitely tell from this how harsh they were and also how specific they were sometimes as well. So on my very official list here of uh, places awesomeness, I guess Sumerians are atop with the invention of maths, written language and now even laws, though there are some dodgy ones at that. Now we've smoothly moved over our timeline without me mentioning too many dates. However, 100 years later, so evening up at 2000 BCE, we have the extinction of an animal who you might not have expected was still around at this point. It was actually the mammoth. The mammoths had existed in most corners of the world, but the last ice age killed off most of them 10,000 BCE. However, some of them survived until this year on this little island here called Wrangell Island. Enough of that now, it's a bit cold up there, so let's go down south. Let's not leave 2000 though, so 2000 BCE, things start happening in Africa, and that's not Egypt actually, but the rest of it. Writing now was developed fairly late in Africa, so much of its history is not appreciated enough because we don't simply have it collected or saved down. However, it's as large as three Europe's and contains 54 countries, so a lot has been going on here for the last 4,000 years worth talking about. The first you'll hear of African history is the Bantu migration, which began around 2000 BCE. That's when people speaking Bantu languages spread from West Africa throughout Central and Southern Africa. Now skipping a few centuries down in history, these people would also possess iron making technology which allowed them to create stronger, more effective tools and weapons, and they would be fierce warriors as well. The Bantu speaking people were so influential that there are some 500 modern languages that derive from the Proto-Bantu language, of which Swahili is most widely spoken today. To understand Africa better, we must understand its environment as well. Since Africa essentially has no mountain, except the Kilimanjaro I guess, there's almost no predictability as to when and where the rain will fall. 
It often leads to too little rain resulting in a drought or too much rain leading to an erosion of the central rainforest and the soil loses its nutrients. So in Africa, as opposed to say Europe, it's impossible to farm the same land for multiple years and this means that nearly every ethnic group in Africa adapts on a year-to-year -year basis and this does not lend itself very well to large-scale agriculture which in turn makes it harder to start a civilization. So allowing myself to stretch this conclusion a little bit, we can basically say that we have our mountains to thank for our civilization. And that was some background on Africa which we'll get back to in about 2000 years. There are obviously smaller civilizations and cities popping up along the way but I can't talk about them all so just bear with me and if you know of ancient Egypt and the Bantu migration then you've got most of your ancient African history covered already. And that guys is it for today. In 300 years we've seen history's first empire, we've seen the first set of laws and we've looked at ancient Africa and I've thoroughly enjoyed talking i hope you've thoroughly enjoyed listening as well i'll see you in the next episode guys have a good one bye, -bye.